Hey everyone, and welcome to days five and six of our RB10 build. I'm so excited to finally get to share this with you because these two days are when we completed the work on the vertical stabilizer. Yay! No, but seriously, that was really exciting for us to, to finally have this huge piece that we had completed and we didn't have to take it back apart again to do any deburring. It was there, all the rivets were there. It was really exciting. Make sure to stick around until the end of the video and you'll get to see some pictures of us celebrating with the completed vertical stabilizer. We needed to continue riveting the rear spar assembly together. It is definitely good to take the time to read through all the directions well and really consider what you're working on. We watched some of Jason Ellis's RV10 build videos before starting our build and saw a great clip there where he'd pointed out about making sure to install the rivets in the correct order. I'll go ahead and link that video below. But you can see in this photo here that um, we got all the parts properly clecoed together for the hinges that were supposed to go onto the rear spar assembly. But if I had riveted the hinges first, then it would have been pretty impossible to rivet those two holes in between them. So just good to really think ahead and make sure you're doing everything in the right order that might not necessarily be completely spelled out in the instructions. Tyler wanted to spray uh, the inside of the stabilizer skin with primer and there seems to be a lot of debate on whether or not to do this. We even got different answers when we were asking members of our local EAA chapter, but we decided to spray the inside of the skin and so I put together the ribs and the front spar and started cutting some of the parts for our next part, which was the rudder, uh, while Tyler went to the store to go and get the primer. Now that Tyler's back, he is prepping the skin for primer while I finished cutting the shear caps for the rudder. Um, I'd already finished putting the skeleton together, so went ahead and moved on. Uh, looking forward in the book to see what else we could do and there is never a dull moment Because when I went to adjust the guidepost on the bandsaw the lock knob came off So I got to spend some time getting better acquainted with our bandsaw But managed to get it back together and in full working order again and then got to work deburring all of the parts that I had just finished cutting uh, with our bench grinder I've heard some people recommend getting a belt sander to use to help with the deburring. Do any of y'all have one? Do you use both the belt sander and the bench grinder? I haven't really made a decision yet on if that's another piece that we want to get. But anyway, if you have one and you could let me know what you think of it in the comments below, I would appreciate it. All right, so we got the skin primed and let it dry completely and got it all clecoed back together again with the skeleton. Now the fun begins, the riveting. You have to go in a particular order when you're doing this because once you rivet certain parts down, like the bottom rib, you will no longer be able to access other parts like the middle rib. So here we are trying to start riveting the middle rib and the gap from the bottom of the skin to the rivet was long enough that I think this definitely worked better as a two person job. It was a far enough reach that it was a bit difficult to get a good grip on it and you couldn't see what you were doing with your arms inside. So it was kind of like a game of find the rivet to make sure that you had the bucking bar properly set up there behind the rivet that you were trying to work on. It was pretty intriguing. The top and bottom ribs were a lot easier since those could be done with the pneumatic squeezer, which I love. It's really nice knowing that once you set it right, that they're all going to come out the same. So that, that made it much easier. There were different rivets to use on different places. So we made sure to mark on the blue vinyl, uh, which ones required different rivets just to help keep us from accidentally installing the right one. It was nice to have a, uh, it already marked on there just to help remind you so you didn't kind of get into a routine and then accidentally put the wrong one in. The hardest part really was near the end where you had to rivet the skin to the forward spar above the middle rib and below the top one. Everything forward of the front spar had been riveted down already and the top rib is one solid piece, not like the two on the bottom, so you could 
take those out to work on that middle rib, you, in order to get the bucking bar uh, behind those rivets there on that uh, forward spar, you had to get your arms in there underneath the skin um, between the middle rib and the top rib. It just, it was not the most comfortable experience. And this was another thing I think really worked out much better as a two person job. Uh, I can imagine this might have been really tricky for somebody to do by themselves. But for us, it worked out really well having two people. We're now into day six. Throughout the whole process, we did have some rivets that had to be drilled out, but you know, that happens and we got them replaced without damaging the skins or enlarging the holes, so I mean, that's just, I think, a part of doing the build. As we got closer to the end, it really became just like a one-person job at this point because all of the final rivets could be installed with just a pneumatic squeezer. So Tyler started looking ahead into the next section about the rudder to see what he could begin working on uh, in there while I was finishing the, all the rivets for the vertical stabilizer. Before we get to the end here with the completed vertical stabilizer, I just want to take a minute to thank you for watching this video. I really hope that you enjoyed it, and if you did, please go below and hit that like button, and be sure to subscribe to my channel if you have not already done so. Also, make sure to hit the little bell icon next to the subscribe button to ensure that you receive notifications every time I post a new video. And my new website, plainlady.com, is officially up and running, so be sure to go check that out, and please let me know what you think in the comments below. And that was it. With those final rivets, the vertical stabilizer was complete. And as you can see, we're super excited and it was a pretty great feeling to have one part of the plane completed. Thanks for watching and I'll have a new video up shortly.